nice to meet you. Um, I'm Caitlin McGrath with The Athletic. Uh, just, I guess the first question here is, what was your initial reaction to learning you were traded and I guess the destination that you're coming to joining the Blue Jays? Yeah, I mean, right away when my GM called, it was kind of more just a little bit of a shocking experience of first time ever getting traded. And it's just like, you think that you're going to stay at that one spot your whole career. And usually that never happens. So I'm glad I had family here to kind of like be able to help me through. I mean, my dad got traded, so he kind of knows exactly the feeling. I mean, he was with Cubs for a long time and going to Pittsburgh, but it was one of the greatest things for him. And so I'm thinking the same thing. I'm coming to this winning team here in Toronto and it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of the guys already reached out to me and um, it's already making me feel at home of being together with this great group. And obviously you played with Arizona and you came up with them. So you don't really cross paths a lot with the Blue Jays. Um, you know, do you know any of the guys or what kind of things do you, initially do you know about the team and what makes you excited um, joining them beyond them just being a winning team? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of like a young group like we were in Arizona, but they have a little bit more time and experience uh, all around. They, they've just got a good all around team and, uh, you know, facing a couple of the guys who went over there with like Kevin Gosman. I mean, it's just, I know what they have there to be able to do a lot of things and make it special. And I think it's a very fun group. I mean, uh, Bo Bichette texted me this morning, welcome me to the team. And it's just pretty cool. Like all those little things, it means a lot to me because it creates a little family bond, which, which is a big thing for me. Awesome. Uh, Merry Christmas and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Ethan. Hey Dalton. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, Ethan Diamandis with Sports Illustrated. Um, for you around the league, you know, you kind of have a reputation as a guy who goes all in every time he kind of takes the field. Curious, just what's your mindset every time you step on the field? Yeah, so my mindset's always fast and physical. Um, I think that's a little bit parallels with my football background of playing football growing up. I, I didn't like to play things slow. So if I'm going after a baseball, it's like I'm going full head steam and uh, I'm going to do anything I can to help this team out. And whether it's running the bases well, playing the outfield, going hard, and um, I'm always going to take care of my team. And I think it's just pretty cool to kind of represent that way. And I uh, learned a little out of those things from my dad. And obviously, you know, you started in the big leagues as a catcher. You've always played some outfield, but your transition to the outfield in 2022 was particularly, you know, uh, effective, I guess. What helped you make that transition to become kind of an elite defender? Yeah, so I got transitioned a little bit to outfield in 2019 when I was in Jackson in double A. Um, and there was a guy there, player named Evan Marzilli. Um, and he helped me out a lot, just taking the time of going through of what could help me of like learning how to read balls off the bat a whole lot better. And he just took the time as, a, as an older guy in double A to kind of sit down and have those little discussions with me. And it kind of improved my outfield play from that year. Um, and it just kind of kept correlating of learning little things and tips from there from other guys and um, just understanding what I can do better in the outfield every day to try to figure out a routine to um, how do I get that ball in the gap a little bit easier. And so I just taking those things from other guys and having a better mindset of what I can do to better further myself out there. Thanks. Happy holidays. You too. You're up, Mike. Hi, Dalton. Mike Wilner from the Toronto Star. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Toronto. Um, I'm wondering first about, uh, you know, we've been told that you're going to be primarily the left fielder for the Jays. Um, you played a lot of right last year and some center as well. Uh, how do you feel about moving to that other corner for a year at least? Yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's another challenge. And I always enjoy those because it it just puts a little bit more effort and a lot of more work into understanding what I can do out there. And so I'm, I'm ready for it. I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun and understanding uh, different routes and different swings on, 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 on my end. And I'm just ready for that challenge to be able to dominate that and uh, be able to master it. You talked about, um, you know, the shock of being traded for the first time. Uh, there have been so many stories about, you know, the Diamondbacks have so many left-handed hitting center fielders. The Blue Jays have catching. These two teams are a great fit for a trade uh, over the course of the offseason. Did you see something like this coming or did it catch you completely by surprise? Uh, I mean, 
it kind of caught me a little bit by surprise. I mean, I, I saw a couple of the rumors and uh, my dad actually mentioned that it would probably be a good fit. Um, but I didn't really ever think that it was really going to happen. And when it happened and I, I got a little shocked, but now of being around and talking with the guys and talking with the staff, it's, it's going to be a great fit for me and my family and um, just excited to be able to be a part of it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks. And uh, have a good Christmas. Thank you. You too. You're up, Ben. Hi, Dalton. Ben Weider from the radio broadcast with the Blue Jays. I was curious how much conversation in this short term have you had about how your defensive uh, assignments might be laid out and how much catching has been in conversation with you and the Blue Jays? Uh, I just talked with Ross the other day, and uh, he, he said that it's going to be mainly playing center and left. Um, so those are the kind of the two positions that they were aiming at for me to kind of be playing at. Great. Uh, what kind of influence has your dad had on your playing career baseball wise? Uh, he's the guy I go to every day. Um, he's the one that I kind of just, I'm able to bounce some things off and he's been there from the beginning to the end of understanding my swing and understanding an adjustment and helping me out with outfield play and understanding of just kind of the little things that go on with everyday game because there's not really many people who can understand of going through a 162 game season and understanding the ebbs and flows and understanding what that's all like so it's a it's nice to have that resource of always having him and being able to bounce some things off and kind of having a different perspective on on the game if i can follow up with one more too on the heels of that are the conversations as you as a current major leaguer different from the perspective of, hey, this is a player conversation versus your dad and all the experiences he has as a manager and a coach for all those years? Definitely. I mean, I, I think um, him knowing kind of the ins and outs of, of the game, going from being a player to being a bench coach and going to be like a scout and a coordinator, he kind of has a little bit of different of a background to kind of help me out with different ways. And um, but that doesn't say that I only bounce those things off of him. I bounce them off our coaches and, um, it's being able to have that good conversation of just, it's just baseball of having a better idea of what's going to work for you it might not work for somebody else. And so it's pretty cool that I can have those resources and, uh, being, have the ability to bounce things off different ways. All right. Thank you. And Mike. Uh, sorry, circling back again, Dalton. I just wanted to ask you about uh, being part of that outfield uh, in Arizona. You had, you know, at times Alec Thomas, you had Corbin Carroll, you had you. Um, and now it seems like the Blue Jays have really concentrated on putting together what appears to be an exceptional defensive outfield. Um, what was it like to be a part of that and how much did that affect um, I know the Diamondbacks didn't have a, a ton of success, but uh, how much did that affect the, the success of, of the pitching when uh, when you guys were out there? Yeah, I think um, the pitchers relied on kind of getting a little bit more contact instead of having to always strike everybody out. Um, so I think it kind of gave them the confidence of being able to throw the ball over the plate and, and trusting that our outfielders were going to be able to go catch it. And when you have this kind of the guys out there that you've played with for a decent amount of time it kind of creates a good bond and um, understanding which balls are whose and um, it's just having that good communication even if it's a quick little look at somebody of understanding they have to move a little bit so it's gonna be a lot of fun playing with Kevin and uh, George out there of having a better idea of how how they play out there and uh, that all comes from string training. Are, are you especially looking forward to to playing beside a guy like Kiermaier? Definitely I mean he's He's a gold glover. I mean, it's it's always fun to be out there with a guy who who plays the same way that I do, where it's it's uh, going hard until you catch the ball and um, being able to learn from him because I think he goes really well back. Um, that's one thing I think I struggle at a little bit. And um, but to be able to learn something, maybe something minimal from him throughout his whole career of what helped him and just bounce some ideas off of him. I mean, it's just cool to be around guys like that who have been in the league for a while. And if I could sneak one more in, too, I mean, you've mentioned your dad a lot um, and you're, you're going to a ball club that has a lot of players with big league dads like Bo and, and Vlad and Kevin. Um, do you, I mean, do you think that's helpful? Do you think that makes it an easier bonding experience for you that you guys have had those similar experiences? Oh, I think so. Um, 
growing up in a clubhouse is, is different as a kid because you 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 hear and you see a lot of things that not many kids are able to do and to be around them and kind of hear what their experiences were as kids. I mean, it's just cool to hear. And um, I mean, it's just like with Alec Thomas, with him being around his dad in Chicago, it was pretty cool to kind of have that connection right away. All right. Thanks again. No problem. And another from Ben. Don, I was curious. Um, we know the defense. We, we know the pop that you possess at the bat. Not a lot of conversation around your base running, but that's one topic that Ross made a point to bring up earlier with us today. How much of it is your personal instinct? Are there influences in your coach as coaches? Or were, was there somebody you gravitated to watching run the bases that you try to mimic? Um, I guess it kind of was instinct as a little kid. I mean, I just I knew the importance of taking that extra base when you can because it puts so much different pressure on the team to be able to make sure that all of their perfect throws and everything, especially as like a pitcher, you go first or third one. Sometimes guys only go to first or second. It's like it just puts that extra pressure of like, oh, I can't spike a curveball here because now I, I give up a run. So I take pride in that. Um, it's kind of a big thing that I know that the D-backs are really big on, but I've been doing that since I, I was a little kid and, and especially in high school and college. I try to I try to play to put as much pressure on the other team as possible, and that's just the way I play.